Hi, I'm Tim Huckabee, and welcome to the User Community Virtual Series. Today, my buddy David Peschel is here. He's from Preemptive. David, thank you so much for coming. Thanks for having me. And I hear you're going to tell us today about exception handling as it relates to Windows Phone and to Azure. Correct, yes. So we're going to talk about how you use uh, some new tools for Windows Phone Mango and for, for Windows Azure to, to capture exceptions across both of those platforms and eventually tie those all the way into TFS in one automated, quick fashion. So I'm going to actually start off with a demo, if that's OK. I think that would Let's be get right to it. So what we have here is, is a Fibonacci client running on the Windows Phone emulator, or it can run on a device, of course. And it is cooperating with Windows Azure to present Fibonacci numbers to the user. Because you never know when you're going to need to know the 12th Fibonacci number. <laughs> so it's good to have a client for this. So I'm going to actually go ahead and do a use case here. I'm going to actually show all the Fibonacci numbers between the, the first Fibonacci number and the sixth. I hit get. And so it's calling out to Azure. You saw it took a moment, and they, they came in. They might not have come in in right, quite the right order. It's all asynchronous. It's, it's using Azure. Um, none of the logic used to create the Fibonacci sequence is on the client, so it, it really truly is using Azure for this. Great, it works, no problem. I'm the end user, I love it. I love this app, great, perfect, five-star review. It's working great. Now, maybe I want to get some higher Fibonacci numbers, so I use 49 to 50. And we've specifically programmed this because, you know, for the purposes of the demo, we specifically programmed this case to actually cause an exception. So this is going to be a bad experience we get you know, the red flashing red, Fibonacci number is too big. Um, if you were holding the device, it would vibrate to let you know, you know something bad has happened. And all, all we know at this point is that the users had a bad experience. They're going to they're gonna get us a low star rating. They're, they're not going to enjoy our app. They're not going to tell our friends about it. It's just overall a bad experience for the user. So we hear about it you know, as the developers of the app and of, of the Azure service. And the question to us is, where is this exception coming from? Is the exception happening on the client side? Is there client code that's, that can't handle the Fibonacci number because it's too big? Is it originating in Azure? Where is this coming from? How do we, how do we fix it? How do we know? So I'm actually going to jump over. As we were doing this, this, this is live. The, these messages are going up. So there was, in, in our case, the exception is actually happening on Azure. Oh, spoiler. And it's coming back to Windows Phone 7, which is also throwing the exception. I'm going to come over to. Uh, this is uh, TFS uh, 2010 running uh, a special query that we have that actually shows two exception uh, uh, work items here that have counts. So you know, we had a couple in here before, so we're up to four instances of the server having exceptions and two instances of the client. So you can already see, we can tell that it's not just the client that's having a problem, it's also the server. So the problem's probably coming from the server. So this helps us. Now we can go look. If we dig in here, um, which I'm not going to do here, but we could dig in, see the stack trace, see how many distinct people are having the issue, get all of our information in one place from TFS. Ultimately trying to find where the problem happens. Ultimately trying to find where the problem happens without our customers having to complain and give us low star ratings and you know, talk about us on our forums and, right. and all those negative, negative things. So let's fix it before they have a chance to complain. Outstanding. So um, we can go through how we actually set this up to gather the exceptions and pipe them all the way through to TFS. Love to. Very, very easy is go to uh, preemptive.com slash Windows Phone 7, where uh, you can download a free version of Dofuscator for Windows Phone 7 developers. It's as easy as these five fields, and you'll have the software. Right. It'll provide you with everything. The great thing about the preemptive tools. Right. For free. Win for Windows Free for Windows Phone, Phone 7 developers. Free. Absolutely. So this will give you Dofuscator for Windows Phone with runtime intelligence. And the, it, it's really very simple. So we go to the first thing we do is go to the input tab, and we target our zap file. So we've built our Windows Phone zap file using Visual Studio, and now we just target it here. So I've set it as my input. And you can see here I have the DLL, and I have some package artifacts as well, you know, my XAML files and all that. None of that matters for us. We're going to go ahead and jump right over to the instrumentation tab. This is where we set up all of our analytics. So you, you may have heard of our other tools. We can do feature tracking and you know, grab information off of the platform, but we're, we're talking about exceptions, so we don't have to set any of that up. All we have to do is add a business app attribute and an application attribute just to identify that this is your app. Right. So the, the data comes to you, it doesn't accidentally go to your competitors or something. Right. Um, and then the only thing you have to do is add an exception track attribute to your assembly. So here on our assembly node, we've added this exception track attribute. Actually, you just right click, add attribute, click exception track, and hit OK. I've already got one, so I'm not going to do that. And all of the default options in here are what we're going to take. So we've targeted our zap. We've gone to the instrumentation tab. 
make sure that Dotfuscator knows who we are, we who our company, it, we right? identify ourselves. And we uh, add this exception track attribute to start gathering exceptions. And then we get all this We're infrastructure for free, technically. Everything else comes for free. Right. All you do is run your build. We actually will take your zap file, take it apart, put together another zap file with the, with the exception tracking in it, and you just deploy that zap file either to your emulator, your device, or to the marketplace, and you're good to go. Now you're tracking exceptions on Windows Phone Mango. Outstanding. And so the really, and then the cool part is, of course, we can do this for Azure services as well, as we've done here, as you saw. So it's a, it's a different tool. You can't quite use this tool for that. It's, it's still Dopuscator, but the, the free version won't cover it. But you can use both of them to send up the exceptions to the same endpoint. You set uh, thresholds. I want to know when 10 of the same stack traces happen. Pipe that to TFS, which, of course, using existing tools can, can send off an email to your lead developers, your PMs. And the, the cycle has been complete. You know, the, the user encounters the problem all the way through to being fixed without the user having to take any manual feedback steps. Very powerful, very easy. Hey, man, I really appreciate you coming today. Thank you so much for showing this. Yeah, thanks. Thanks again for having us. And thank you guys for watching.